Okay, I'm back on this Sharp VC381. Uh, I've got a belt kit for it, which is a VBK39 from Wagner, or probably get it from other places. Um, also, if you're after the pinch rollers for these, they're v VPR59 from Wagner. I think they're actually listed under Akai rather than Sharp, which made it a little harder to find because they're not listed under Sharp 300 series, but actually under an Akai by the dimensions. Um, I actually ordered that one for the Orion VH2 I've got to do, and the lamp is the SL50 for these. I don't think I'll bother changing the one in this one, I probably should, but um, that one looks like it's been changed at some stage. I might have even done it, I can't remember what I did to this when I first looked at it. But mainly what I'll be doing today, the pin roll is pretty good in this, but it wasn't so good in the Orion, so I'll save that for that one. But we'll be replacing this belt kit, I've already got it dismantled. I guess I should do the old trick of shoving the lid in there just to hold that board out of the way. And so we've got a couple of counter belts, idler tyre, I think that's all that's on the top, and then there's a couple of loading, or oh, a capstan belt of course, from there to there. And a couple of loading belts, there's a loading motor under there somewhere, or is it under, it's under here maybe, I can't remember where it is now. So long since I've put one of these to bits. So we'll do that, and it could do, I've actually glued the little um, brake pad back in there already, letting that dry. It could probably do with a bit of a dust out. Doesn't look like I've even bothered to give this even the most basic wipe over with a brush. Usually best to do that, and then you can clean all the tape path because there's a risk this will put grease on things, dusty or greasy dust. So it doesn't have to get all that out of the way first. And we'll put yeah, the new parts in. Um, I guess probably the counter belts are the easiest one to replace. One over the reel to the little hall effect sensor there, then another one goes through the front panel. You can actually just lift these counters out. I could probably do with a bit of a dusting too. Yeah, a bit of dust everywhere really. Good time to check these reels actually. Should take that brake off. Yeah, they spin nicely, so I don't think I need to do anything with those. So these just peel open at the bottom, you don't have to tear them open at the top. They are resealable. Jesus. Been sitting around so long that the glue's gone pretty hard on this. Usually they're a lot easier to open. But yeah, these are probably getting pretty old now. God knows when they last made one of these belt kits. So with these two counter belts, looks like one's slightly bigger than the other. I think it's a smaller one goes to the counter. We can put that on that lower pulley, the dark coloured one. And then you just pull it through the front, hold it with your finger and put it around the pulley on the counter. Then the counter slots up and back down. Give that a spin, make sure the counter's turning, which it is. And the other one just simply goes around the reel and around the upper pulley. When you turn that, you should see a counter spinning. Oh, it doesn't have my hand in the way, but... Tape counters incrementing there, like a little odometer thing, just a mechanical one. Uh, next thing is to get this, actually use a pair of side cutters or something to just grab that spring, put that somewhere safe, and top screwdriver. I've already got the screws out of the circuit board underneath, which helps, so I'll just, I haven't actually unclipped it yet, but that's easy enough to do. Take that piece off as well. And we really need to unplug the front panel, drop the circuit board down, and that real motor just falls out on its own. Just be careful not you don't crunch it into the board or anything. If you put, sit this back down, but we can just, even when that's sitting up a bit, I'm actually sitting on the, the real motor at the moment. And I think I put a second hand tire in there that was a bit better than the original, but that just peels off. Sometimes you need to get a screwdriver under, but normally you can just peel it off by hand. Depends how hard it is, how old it is. I think because I had that one off before it came off nice and easy, it was a fairly pliable one. But some of these, this rubber will go really hard and be difficult to get out. There's a bit of hair there. You can actually put a little bit of oil, on, uh, grease under here I should say. 
probably wouldn't hurt you can see where the I think it's the edge of this thing slides around a bit it's a bit of a bit of a little mark there probably wouldn't hurt to put just a little tiny amount of grease on that just so the plastic's got something to slide around on that's the sort of amount I'm talking just a tiny amount it's only a, a dust catcher really if you put too much so then we can get our real give the real pulley a clean there's some metho that's just a little dirty there often you find lots of bits of black dust or little particles that used to be part of the idle tire dust that off as well clean that pulley doesn't hurt and that can be poked back through behind the idler there and you just got to line your holes up are they the right ones i think there's a couple of pairs of holes here but we want the screw holes Obviously, yeah. don't one handed like this is not always the best way, but if I can just at least get this real motor to stay in place so it's not dropping back in, might as well do it right up. Sit that back on the board because I'll have to get the board open again in a second. Get that little eyelet thing there pointing the right way, and we can just clip this back under, back into the spring. The larger and longer bit goes under the little post there that releases the brakes in the tape, and then just flicks in through that little eyelet thing. Just make sure it moves around all right and springs back on the motor all right, which it does. So that's the other side done. They really aren't very hard to do. That's one good thing about these sharp machines. They're very simple to work on. And then I come back from the other way. I don't know how much of this I'm going to be able to show because this board doesn't really lift up very well. Can I get that a bit higher? Not even sure. There's a brown wire there clipped in that's might be able to just yeah, get that high enough. I might have to poke either the cover or something else back under there. Not ideal. Don't want to push against anything fragile. That might just be enough. You can just be able to see the caps in here. There's the caps, the motor pulley, the gold thing. Okay, it's not perfect, but I've got the lighting a little bit better on this one. So I can see a bit more what's going on. Might actually need a stubby screwdriver, I think, on this to make it easy. What's interesting, the earth of that is actually disconnected. So you've got to take this bracket off. You know, use a little stubby screwdriver under here because it's a bit... I think you've only just got to undo that screw a bit and then yeah, that'll come out. It's got a hook on the end and a screw the other end. That all looks alright. And then what we can do is pull this belt off. Just unhooks off the motor pulley and, and the the capstan flywheel I normally give these a clean as well because there's often a bit of old belt on the capstan make sure that's that's a little noisy and also the pulley on the motor bound to be filthy not too bad but depending on what the condition of the belt is it'll usually have a bit of belt on there in there might let's see I think there's a plastic piece on the other side of this pulley uh, this capstan here on the top there's a black so if you pull that slightly and then push it back in you'll release this little black washer that is around the top of the capstan and then we should be able to just pull this out So that's definitely making some grunting noises and I can actually see this sort of yellowy coloured 
muck which has dried up grease. So clean that off. Probably that's a good chance also to clean any oxide left on there like there is. But we definitely want that grease gone and same on the actual bearing. There's another little plastic washer. I'll just put that back on the motor so I don't lose it. Under the the bearing. So try and push the cotton bud up into the bottom part of the bearing. Because I think these are actually hollow, there's like a bushing each end. I'll go down into the upper part. Oh yeah, quite a bit of muck came off that upper part of the bearing or bushing or whatever it is. I think there's two actually separate sort of bronze bits there. We can use a bit of this green scourer to actually remove the really stubborn oxide. There's usually a couple of rings of it either side of where the tape goes. It may mark it a little bit the capstan but I never had any problem doing that. That scour is probably, probably a little bit harsher than the usual one but do that. Now I'll just put a little bit of grease on there. Someone has to do their chainsaw on today. And then we just insert that back in. Oh, ah, the was in the way. Insert that back into the machine. Watching not to get that underneath it. Still making a little bit of noise. Which is a bit of a worry. That's quietening down now. Or is it? Very loose in there now. It is making the slightest noise. Now we'll just put this little plastic bit back on the top. Because I've got to put that over and show it. Not easy to film this really, so it just goes back over top of the shaft and that should wipe most of the grease down. And there you go. That's got that pretty right. Flip this back over. It's just a matter of reassembling that. Is that lid back on there? Now clean. Uh, it's never something right where you need it to hold this up. There we go. Get the new belt, and obviously put that back over the capstan and the motor before we put the bracket back on. Dirty handprint, dusty handprint there, so I'll just remove that. And it does have a few dirty fingerprints from me, so always a place to check that. And that just hooks under one end again. And find that screw I took out. Oh, got to put that little earth eyelet thing back under there. I think that earth's the bottom of the chassis or something. Tighten that up. Tighten that one up. This loading belt should just actually just come off if I've got a clean screwdriver somewhere. You should be able to just flick that off, the, push it off the front of the motor pulley like that and then pull it back out through and it comes out the gap. So Another nice little design by Sharp there, and it looks like they've given us two belts here. One's bigger, yeah, and one's the same, or a little smaller, which is even better, because this one will be a bit stretched. And again, pays to clean the pulleys. I'll probably get the timing slightly out doing that, because this is running the master cam, but it'll reset when I put the power back on if it needs to. 
it's sometimes you just got to hold that with a screwdriver so you can do it then rotate it with the cotton bud and then just yeah same thing rinse and repeat Ro roll it with the cotton bud hold it with a screwdriver while you actually wipe it until you sort of roughly gone all the way around it Pretty sure I've got it all now. It's not very dirty that one anyway. A little bit of stuff came off. So I'll put that spare belt away, and it's just a matter of doing the reverse, squeezing it in between the two. Shouldn't be anything greasy around here to so you're pretty safe not to get oil or grease or anything on it. It doesn't have to clean it again afterwards if you're worried. We should be able to just hook that over the first pulley on the motor, which I think I'm on. Yep. When you pull it up it should, and then you can just sort of roll this other roller. Once you've got it on the top, just roll it and it will follow it around and hook itself on. So that's all good. Master cam and other gear center have plenty of good sticky grit or lubricating grease on them, not sticky. So that's all there really is to the belt kit in these. You can now put the board back as I was in a hurry to do. Plug the front panel back in. Flip this over. Put this one back out of the way. And I, look, I can't remember if I actually cleaned this at all. This machine, it looks reasonably clean, but I'll just go over it all again, especially the capstan since I'll do that last, I think, because I've probably got a bit of oil on there still. Even though that washer will push most of it down. Put them up there, make sure the audio head's clean. This roller's often got a bit of muck on it. Not bad, it's pretty damn clean really this machine for its age and the condition they were normally in. Must have had a lot of use. And the capstans were near impossible to clean off from the amount of baked on oxide over the years do all these tape guys this little roller here just flicking it around with your finger as you go to make sure you get the whole surface same with this erase head and now that cotton bud's getting a bit oh actually before I throw it in a bin let's just clean that capstan off in case there's any grease on there nothing really seems to be coming off but since I had grease on it make sure we get rid of that then you want a good tight fresh cotton bud for the heads and where these holes are that's where the little head piece is down below you can see the little slot and you just very carefully go side to side never go up or down because they'll break off as easy as they're only a little tiny bit of ferrite virtually nothing coming off there the whole upper drum and this almost looks new it's so clean which usually these have quite a bit of oxide definitely some stuff coming off it but that's that's absolutely nothing and the lower drum being careful as you do the lower drum and I usually start at one end usually the wide end I think and move around like I am now if you're right handed it might be a bit different but as you go turning you'll notice I'm turning these heads around so those screw holes are always away from where I'm wiping so I'm not no risk of breaking the heads so always keep those heads so they're like your 90 degrees away from them sort of thing so in this middle bit here or the other middle bit in between the sets of holes so there's no chance that while you're fiddling around this you're going to rub on the heads break them or anything because this cotton bud's probably getting a bit looser now so you want to use a fresh cotton bud a nice tight one when you start on that i don't think i'll clean these reels usually best to give those a clean the surfaces that go up against the idler not much on there but still if you're going to put a new idler in that's actually got a little bit of muck stuck on that one, I think. What on earth is that? Some sort of white stuff on there. Has it come off? No, it's still there. Might just have to very carefully poke that with a screwdriver. Yeah, there's a little lump of oh yeah, something definitely stuck to it. It's come off. Some sort of white stuff, so that could have been a bit of paper off, and you get bits of the paper labels off videotapes and stuff or the, the rental ones but usually those little number labels and stuff you could stick on the blank tapes you bought 
they often used to be found inside these machines along with coins from kids and all sorts of stuff so that could have been a bit of that something had got squashed I'd say between the idler and the reel and stuck to it now the next thing I'll use the dry end of the cotton bud and just get some grease and these tape guide paths want might be better using the screwdriver but as long as you can get a bit of grease and just smear it down them because sometimes they'll sort of jerk and as they go along and make a bit of a rattling noise if these are really dry I don't think these sharp ones do it but certain machines used to get a feel like it might have been one of the nationals or something they used to sort of rattle along you could sort of see them jerk along a little bit and rattle if this was really dried up which after quite a few years it usually was I don't think most people really cared about it much but certainly if you're going to service a machine you want to fix all that sort of stuff or fix it up for yourself or fix it up to sell it or anything you always go over that sort of thing and there's a bit of dust down in there I'll just scrape it out sometimes the dust is really stuck to the stuck to the oil and stuff on the or grease on the chassis so that should be about all this thing actually really needs I should just check that the lamp's still going which it is when you put the power on because these lamps were notorious for blowing on the way to the shop or on the way home again was the worst one when you fix it for the customer so a lot of the time I used to give them a bit of a flick on the side and if they blew I'd replace them or I'd usually just replace them a lot of the time for what they were worth just do it as routine maintenance it actually helps the customer out because it's one less thing that's going to go in the future so they don't have to bring it in again and for a couple of dollars or whatever they were it was worth just putting it in and charging the customer for a new lamp and that way you didn't get a recall and they got a lamp that was going to last quite a while rather than one that could you know blow a month later or whatever and they have to bring it back and pay for another repair for you to pull it all to bits again so it actually saved them money uh, we'll put the screws for that save them money in the long run and saved you the hassle of getting a phone call that they just got at home and it doesn't do anything won't play a tape and that was because that when that lamp goes none of the tape functions work there's obviously some sort of current draw sensor on it or maybe it's when it's ejected it detects it with the end sensors I'm not sure how they do it never bothered to actually look at the circuit used to have manuals for all these machines and I don't think I ever looked to see how they actually sense whether the lamp is working or not because if you had a tape in it when you turned it on they wouldn't know so it must have a current sense thing if it blew with a tape in there it'd try and run otherwise because obviously if that isn't in there it can't detect the ends of the tape so especially in rewind or fast forward it would probably break the tape or might, could possibly damage the machine I guess but with a rubber idler probably just slip but it may well break the leader tape off the reel or something in the tape But that's all you really need to do to these. I used to buy a lot of these machines second hand not working and 99% of them that was all that had to be done. Just new belt kit, service, back out the door again as a working machine and put a six month warranty on it and you wouldn't see it back in that six months. So very rare they ever came back. That's all they normally needed. I just remember where the other belt went in these and of course there's one on the loading mechanism here cassette housing or whatever you want to call it i don't remember how we take these off you've got to take obviously that i think yeah we just unscrew this motor and i think yeah because that end pulls out of the take that little clamp out there uh, just a couple of screws on the actual loading motor here the end of it Yeah, there must be a use for that other belt. They don't give you one for nothing. If it's a kit for that particular model. Yeah, I think this just... Uh, does it need to do anything weird? It should just pull out, basically. Although they've got this other gear up against it, which makes it more difficult. There we go. Just got to kind of hook it out and then try and... Well, it doesn't matter with the old belt. But try and avoid getting grease the grease off that gear onto your new belt but what I will do is give that a 
a clean before I do anything. That pulley's fairly dirty on that motor. On the load motor there, and I'll clean the other pulley here. As I always do. And then yeah, this other little belt that's left over. So again, like I said, just avoid the grease, make sure you don't touch it on the worm wheel bit there, and then just pull it onto the motor. That's as simple as that. Now we're just going to wriggle this back into place. Yeah, just sort of put that in on an angle. And we should be pretty right. Just half tighten that one. Put this one back with this little cable clamp thing. Yeah, magnetic screwdrivers, they're sometimes more trouble than they're worth. That needs to go down a bit. Pull everything where you don't want it. Yeah, that's it. Tighten them up properly, and that was the last belt in that kit. Yeah, September 83 written on this motor, so it was definitely made around that time. And now I can put that back together. And hopefully that's it for this machine. Though, like I say, the signal's not looking 100% through it. But I don't 100% tr trust my test TV. I probably should put some switch cleaner lubricant in the test switch as well, just to make sure that's right. Plug this back in, I guess. And I might go through AV with everything and see what it looks like. Ah, it goes the other way around. I should have plugged that back in before I put the Mac in, that's what I normally do. Well, that's that's it for this machine. Don't know what I'm even gonna do with it, probably just end up being a display piece. Even though this one's not the prettiest, it's not in the best condition, fair few scratches on the case. But this was such a common machine once. I certainly spent plenty of time fixing these things. Can't say I feel particularly sentimental about them, but they were one of the earliest things, my friend at school had one. I think it was one of the first video recorders I put a new set of heads in. And yeah, they're certainly a classic old machine of that era. Uh, I guess I can leave that out. Okay, I'll try a dummy tape in here again. Just run that take up spool by or reel by hand if you want to keep this running in vision search or anything. Because when it's only the one turning, it's not turning that little hole sensor that is on the counter belt. That all seems alright. It's winding it back in when I stop. Spit that out. I think, was the display bad in this machine? I get a funny feeling. I was actually thinking of trying another display in this one as well, because I think this one's dim. Oh yeah, it's not real pretty. So yeah, the display on this is rather, rather dim. Get that in focus. And some of the segments in particular, this is kind of rather scratched this bit on the front panel. I do have a better one there. I wonder if I can swap the, the lens bit over. Someone's really scratched the hell out of this one. Could almost be a project. I think you can push that back out from the outside. It's a bit risky, but yeah, I definitely think I'll change that display. So we we'll take the front panel off. Yeah, it's not the best. Where is it? Doesn't look too bad there. As soon as you put that diffuser and stuff back over it or a bit of light on it, it 
You can see the sort of two isn't the best on it, so I do have an old board out on these if I can find it. So I might try swapping that display over. Something I don't notice here, I've got this other board out of one of the old machines that I pulled the mechanism apart in that was all corroded and stuff. As you can actually see that the, if I can get the reflection off it, you can see the figures in this actually look better than the figures in that one. They're not as whitey coloured. So I might just swap this whole board, it's got a few connectors to change over. Basically it comes as this whole front panel board and three connectors I think go underneath onto the main board. So I might actually try swapping the whole board over, it might be easier than I was going to unsolder the display. It's not that big a job. But I, I would reckon, reckon this, this particular machine, even though it hasn't played a lot, it's probably had the clock running for years and years and years. So I'll flip that over. Have a look. Oh, I'll just, I guess we can just swing this board back out again. Disconnect it from the front. And yeah, we've got several because this board here, front panel board, just oh, there's a screw in it. I forgot they had a screw in them. So one big screw there. One big screw there. And I think we just, yeah, there's a little latch at the top here. If I pull on that board a bit and poke that up, it should just, yeah, just come out. I have pulled a few of these machines over the years. Pulled them apart, that is. And we've got, here yeah, several cable. They're cable tied underneath here. There's a little wiring harness goes to several connectors. I can get rid of that cable tie. That allows it to come out a bit better. Ooh, where do they go? Good. One goes to the bottom board. One comes up into the tuner area, I think. And the other one, I have no idea where that goes, but I'm going to have to unscrew this board again. Sounds a bit premature putting that in place. Get the focus right again. So connector, where did it come up at? I think it might have cut be this wires that come up here, so where does that go to? Looks like the head amp or something. <laughs> Can't possibly go to the head amp. Must be these other wires. They do they go to, oh they're probably these uh, PC5. Looks like they've labelled all these connectors. Yeah, PC5, so it goes to the power supply. So I need that one out of the power supply. Try and get these other wires out of the way so I can get it out of there. So it goes up under those ones. Oh god, where's it going through there as well? So that one's loose. And we just clip this off and this board should come out. And which other connector was it? It would be one of that, probably that one there with the mouldy mouldy coloured, which is UB5. That's BA5. Oh wait, what's the other one here? AD5 UB5 Oh yeah, that one definitely goes somewhere else. Is there another board hidden under here? Obviously not. Maybe it goes to the... Maybe it went to the upper board and I didn't even notice. That's probably what it is. Oh, there it is. UB5. Well, that was a waste of time getting that board out. So it's this connector. Oops, watch that electrode. Here. That one, that one, and one on the bottom, so yeah, the rest of it's coming from below, which is AD5 here. So I should be able to pull all these. Uh, that one's catching on something. Yeah. I was sworn I poked that down under the board, but it decided to come back up again. And that's the wiring harness out. And this front board should just slot out, just pull the wiring through there. So they were semi-modular these things, if you couldn't be bothered fixing a board you could always swap them. I think I'll swap the old like main top board with some weird colour fold or something in it. Yeah, it's just been easier to swap the whole board over out of a, a machine that was wrecked for other reasons, chemical problems or whatever. rather than trying to spend hours tucking down some weird 
obscure colour fold or something in an old machine. And especially if it was just a second hand machine, you often had like 10 or 15 of these machines at once you'd look at and one of them would have some weird problem or whatever and you'd start pinching the odd parts out of it for the other machines. There might be a faulty counter or a faulty motor or whatever and by the time you finished you'd have 14 working machines and one that had been completely gutted for parts. The one with the weird fault so it wasn't worth fixing it anyway. It was a good parts machine. And that's what often used to happen with the difficult ones. Sometimes you get machines that have been hit by lightning and all sorts of stuff and have all sorts of weird problems in them. Electronic problems. Why oh, won't that go through? Oh, it's catching on the plastic. There's a second bit of plastic in there. I'd say, yeah, just a matter of. They really don't want to go through, especially all these cable ties and stuff on them. They catch on absolutely everything. It seems that hole's not as easy to get through as it should be. So yeah, we'll just pop this board back in, clip it in. I'll put that screw back in after once I've made sure this actually works. And that was the UB5. Which I think went down here. No. Must have been the AD5. AD5 on the bottom board, poke the other ones back up through the hole. I should really put a cable tie back on there, but I won't just yet. Ah, go through the hole. Really does not want to go back in this wiring harness. I should be right to put this board back in place. That's our UV5. Yeah, it's got UV next to it, so I don't think the 5 really means much. And just get this other one. Let it go under that wiring harness. Close enough should be good enough. They're not like high voltage TV cables or anything. There's a possibly some sort of interference or something could happen. I think that was sort of clipped in there a bit too. And then just pull that back. So I can't get in the way of the mechanical stuff. Let's um, refocus and we'll plug it in and see if it does anything. Yeah, looking a lot brighter that one. It's like I say, I'm guessing that other one's probably been running as at least as a clock for a long time. Yeah, we don't have any channel buttons, but are we switched to. I think when you switch to AV, you lose that. Oh, that's a worry. Where's the front panel? So we don't know if TV video. Uh, that's a tuner. We should have a tuner selection here, I would think. Which is would be that button there. So that's a bit of a worry. Must be I didn't check if the other one. Oh, don't think it'd have anything to do with me having the front panel. Oh, it probably would, because of course we're probably not on. That's the other thing we need to do: is switch the video on. <laughs> That would stop them from lighting as well. And it really just wants that panel cleaning a bit. Even though I did clean it before, I've put my dirty hands all over it. Where's my metho dot? Under all the video parts, of course. Oh, that is so much clearer, I can't get over that. It's a chance that the rest of these buttons and stuff should be in working order. Very rare for these anything on these boards to fail, so that one's just a very cooked old display. And that was one useful thing I got out of that old machine that I pulled to bits. There were actually two of them. This still doesn't look so good with the cover on it. But it's a lot better, at least all the numbers are there and clear. I guess the next thing is do I try and Front panels off those other machines are all corroded and stuff unfortunately, so I can't really... I think that pushes out through the front, this piece. If I carefully prise this bit off, it should come off reasonably easy from memory. Yeah, that just comes off. It's just got like a little strip of double-sided tape there now. I think this other one is the same, but it's from memory it's quite hard to get off. 
I can see it's got here. Yeah, it is actually flexible stuff. I actually thought it was hard plastic. It does have double-sided tape, but oh yeah, that's that's getting it. If I just push into that, I can. It's actually tearing off, probably bulging out on the outside. Yep. You can see that, but I could just about get my screwdriver through. There it goes. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's one problem. It's actually taken the paint off. Damn. So maybe going a little bit slower is a better idea. It doesn't really matter with this one if I can get the other one off intact. That is just really scratched. Yeah, just blocking the light quite a lot just from the amount of scratches on it. It's sort of like a diffuser. So I've got another panel right above me here that I just stuck on the side of the bench. This is the sort of stuff you had to do when you're fixing up second-hand machines, trying to get them back. There's always sort of this physical damage and stuff to them. Trying to get them as nice as possible, so you can sell them for as much as possible. You end up doing a lot of this sort of messing around. A lot of people wouldn't bother, but just sell horrible, rubbishy-looking things. But I used to like trying to get them as good as possible. I do have another front panel somewhere, so if I get really desperate, if I wreck this one, I'll try and get this red bit off again. That, that is the easy bit. Yeah, that one's got some muck on the inside of it. That's got a kind of probably a bit hard to see, but it's not as red looking on one side as the other because it's got like a coating of not shiny. Got a coating of like cigarette smoke or something along those lines. I don't think a knife blade on here would be ideal. Oh, geez, that went through a bit quicker than I expected, and ooh, I ripped it a little bit, I think. Taking the black off just ever so slightly. Ah, uh, yeah, it has, damn it. Always that releasing bit is the hard bit. I could probably put something black on the back there, maybe, to try and hide that. I'm just carefully peeling this thing. I was only getting this front panel as a bit of a display piece anyway, just in the shed. But I can always put the old one back on that one if I want to. Yeah, it's got a couple of missing black bits, but it already looks a ton better. Wow, yeah, big difference. Possibly just putting a bit of marker pen or something on it may work. I don't know that it will, but it's not really black enough. I might have to spray paint it or something. That does help. I guess if you actually blackened where it's going to sit, oh, it actually, once you poke it in there, yeah, it almost does fix it, just having a bit of Sharpie on it. Certainly improves it. But yeah, I think some black. I think I've got some black spray paint I could probably put on there. The things you got to do. If we put something, you know, once that light isn't visible, we'll put it a bit under there as well where it's going to sit. That should probably darken it down enough. Once it's pressed into place. Oh, there's that other little dot right there somewhere. I don't know if that'll stick in on its own, but yeah, that's actually fine. Probably not the world's most perfect fix, since it, that pen might fade away in the sun or something, if it ever sees any sun. Yeah, that's actually, that old tape's actually locking it back in there, right, so amazingly. It looks like someone's even scraped this one a bit on the back. The one out of the other machine looks better. There's some very fine scratches on the other one, so maybe a customer had the front off trying to, because their display was so dim, they tried cleaning it with something abrasive, trying to get it better, and all they did was make it worse. It certainly happens. Get a bit of dry paper towel, and just wipe that off. Polish off any muck that's still on there. I'm probably putting fingerprints on it is the hassle. So I've got a little bit of tape on it, but that won't matter. That's out of the viewing area. 
That should come out really nice and shiny on both sides, which it is. And that's still a bit dirty down the end I'm holding. I think that's going to just stick back in there, but oh, maybe it will. It is actually still sticky, amazingly. Oh, there you go. Even after God knows how long, I mean, this is a 1983 or something machine. God, that's making it like 40 years old, isn't it? So even after that time, that tape is still good, which is a miracle, really. It's still sticky. Most double-sided tape in that period is all dried up and died and stopped doing its job. So that, whatever the Japanese is there was good quality stuff. Yes, that's much clearer. I can actually just see through that. No scratches and stuff. Shame the front panel's all scratched, but oh man, that is a lot different. And I don't know if you can really see the difference, but focusing a bit for that it's come up really nice the two isn't all faded out it's not as nice as when you've got the actual cover off it I think they use that red filter to make it look a bit more bluey color or paler anyway because it looks quite a bit greener is that the word for it aqua green I'm not sure it's more blue or more green without the filter on it but either way that filter makes it look a lot worse in a way. I actually like the fluorescent sort of bluey green colour. Looks good on the clocks and stuff. The actual fluorescent um, digital clocks, clock radios and those sort of things. Turn that back off. I think I can basically reassemble it except for the cover now. I guess I should really leave this up to observe everything while the tape's playing but it was running fine before so I'm confident my belt kit will run as well as the last thing so I guess we can power this up and test it so where's my dummy tape I always forget the focus I guess I should have left the lid off so I can actually see what was happening but anyway we'll I've seen enough of that already. I've got to press that and get my fingers out of the way. So just check that it's lacing up, which it is. Uh, the reels going is the important thing. Check the vision search, fast forward, rewind, hit stop, and make sure that supply reel is going backwards because that's what sucks the tape back into the case. And prevents it from getting chewed, which it is. High speed rewind. Check the counters going. Fast forward, they'll shut themselves off normally anyway. Time is off. So I think that should be a goer. I might just wipe the dust off that. The circuit board is pretty dusty. But if it's mechanically functioning, we should have a picture of this. But double check that we do before I put the covers back on although I probably should just go on the AV for now anyway but I wouldn't mind setting this to its test pattern test on off this should be channel 3 or 4 on 3 there yeah, gotta flick the TV video switch to video or you won't get anything on your RF. Okay, and I've got my RF out from the set-top box. Into the RF in on this thing. Yeah, often these switches are a little dicky too, which can cause intermittent dropping out and stuff. And is that on or off? I can never remember this set-top box. That's the clock, so that would be on. And I think it comes out on UHF. UHF. That's the next thing. Do we have a working tuner? Oh, here we go. Do 
Oh, Dicky. Uh, which ones I see? A little bit of interference there. I think that's AFC off. What a great fine tuning that is. Well, AFT, I guess that would be. Sometimes these signals are a little strong for them out of these set top boxes. Shouldn't tell me on the top cover what that is. It is AFT, AF and on is over that way. Even that's a little grainy, so that could be the actual TV. Definitely a little dicky on that test switch. That's basically working. Vision search works. Good clear picture. Sounds a little scrapey there. Tracking. Usually best to check your tracking somewhere around the middle of the range on a sort of pre-recorded tape. That can be adjusted if it's not, but normally we find they're okay. Reset the counter. That's the original recording. It's in long play or something. I hope this hasn't clogged the heads up. Wouldn't be surprised, it's not pretty much an unknown condition tape. It's pretty cold and wet at the moment, the weather, so. Oh yeah, something's gone wrong, but it's not your normal dirty head look. A bit of a grainy picture, but now the video pictures was perfect. Has it gone to that? So I think I want to clog the heads up, but normally you don't even see that much of a picture from memory. Oh yeah, there's muck on the heads. More coming off from now than when I originally cleaned them. You just want to make sure that the heads are not wet. So I'll just give them a blast to the hairdryer. Pictures back again. Well, is it? It was. I know it's just a bad patch on that tape. Be my luck. Go back a second. Oh, I can hear the tape crunching ever so slightly. 
There is a bad patch in that. Oh, probably where I put that tape in. It may have transferred some muck from one tape to the other. That's annoying. I forgot that can happen. One bad tape can wreck another tape. That's the problem with VHS. Yeah, it has got a little bit of stuff on there and actually damaged the tape a bit. Which is why I use old tapes that didn't cost you anything. See, there's a little bit of colour, sort of artefacts in that. Not the nicest picture ever. And a few little dropouts, which could be either the tape or the head's getting down a bit. That's pretty much how VHS often was. Anyway, thanks for watching.